Good morning and namaskar everyone. This is your host for the day, Jaya. Well, it's immense pleasure to welcome all of you and all the dignitaries today to this wonderful auspicious ceremony that is 51st FHRAI National Convention 2016 at Indore, Madhya Pradesh. So, sabse pehle, aaj ki shuruaat karte hain. I mean, business session should start. Uh, topic hai hamara aaj ka new age payment option and for this business session, I would like to invite the moderator, Mr. Shell Barot. Mr. Shell, please. <laughs> Mr. Shell Barot is International Business Development Director of Kobai Hospitality Group. His famous brands are Rajdhani Restaurant and Revival Hotel. He is the youngest executive committee member of HRAWI, and he is chairing various committees such as Infotech, E News, E Portal social media and business seminars. He has digitized HARWI by introducing e-payment for membership, e-newsletter over email, archiving of HRAWI magazine on the website and is currently contributing the industry by writing article for HRAWI and FHRAI magazine. So after that, I would like to invite our panelists uh, for the session, and our first panelist is Mr. Sudhakar Sharma. So please. Mr. Sudhakar Sharma is the director merchant of Movie Quick, and he has 11 years of technology and sa technology sales wallet experience. Currently heading offline merchant survivor at Movie Quick. Creating view new solutions to spearhead offline adoption of Movie Quick wallet and uh, our next panelist for the day is Mr. Saurabh Jain. So please. <laughs> Mr. Saurabh Jain is the chief manager of mobile payments of ICICI Bank with a total experience of 10 years and he is involved in strategic role for new product development in mobile payment domain. He has extensive experience in developing payment solutions based on prepaid mobile wallets, NFC, etc. His experience covers all aspects of product development, right from technology architecture to back-end processes and customer service setup. He is mainly responsible for providing customized service payment solutions for corporate and e-commerce firms on digital platform. Now, I would like to invite the last panelist, that is the next panelist, uh, Mr. Mohit Kanadia on stage, so. <laughs> Mr. Mohit Kanadia is business head of Reliance Geo. He is the founder and manager of Geo Money, and he has been experience of 15 years, and he works very closely with the chairman of Reliance. Currently, he is heading Geo Money to fulfill its vision of digitizing payment and commerce in India. Now, I would like to hand over this podium and request Mr. Shal Barut to go ahead with the seminar proceedings. Shal, please join us. Thank you. So I'll just start uh, with a small introduction for all our panelists today. We've got uh, MobiQuick, the largest wallet that's just closed another round of funding and you've got about 30 million plus customers right now. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we've got uh, Geo Money, the 60,000 pound gorilla in the room. And uh, usually we believe that uh, if Reliance does a, a business, it's definitely here to stay. We've got ICICI uh, as India's biggest private banker and also who's got the most innovative solutions. I'll start off uh, with a question for all the panelists. If you can just give us a brief about what you do today and we'll keep it related to payments as of now. Uh, good morning, everyone. So as uh, one of the major players in uh, banking industry, payments is obviously one of the focus areas for all the banks. In ICICI Bank, we continuously strive to keep up with the market, keep up with the customer requirements, and we come out with 
innovative and convenient payment solutions for our customers, for our corporate and retail clients. And apart from your regular credit card, debit card based businesses, we are working on uh, mobile wallets like Pockets, which is the largest bank owned wallet by in the country. We are at the forefront of this new payment technology, the Unified Payment Interface, UPI, which has been launched recently last month. And we are the first bank who already have crossed one lakh customer mark on UPI just last week. Morning, everybody. Uh, I represent MobiQuick. MobiQuick is the second largest wallet, one of the largest one in the space. We have approximately 35 million uh, customers and counting, almost a lakh merchants enrolled on our system. We also have uh, close to 2 million app sessions every day. That means 2 million customers open up our app every day and almost a million transactions that are happening largely on the recharge and also now on the uh, offline purchase that we are looking at. Good morning, uh, distinguished members of FHRAI. It's uh, honor to be here. Well, the reason, uh, you know, Geo is into payments is because uh, India is a cash economy. And uh, of all consumer to merchant payments that happen, 95% happens in cash. This is after the cards industry has been in India for last three decades. And uh, we thought there's an opportunity to digitize payments and to uh, uh, help, uh, obviously, you know, improve the efficiencies uh, in the economy. What do we do today? Uh, we are a very, very young uh, business. Uh, as you know, our chairman launched Geo on 1st of September, so early this month. And Geo uh, uh, Money is one of the uh, businesses of Geo. Uh, we, in the last 20 days, have. Uh, uh, got six million customers, uh, and we are seeing a we are seeing a very good traction of uh, of uh, of the of our payments platform. I'm probably trying to start a battle here, but uh, probably the second question would be that how is each one different from the other? You want to start? Yeah. So I think uh, payments has just started in India. Digital payments has just uh, started. So a lot of innovation is happening thanks to multitude of players. For us, uh, we have some defining principles, uh, two defining principles. As far as the consumer is concerned, uh, they should be able to pay digitally to anybody, not just to large organizations such as, uh, say, a shopper stop uh, or even some of the uh, best known brands in the hotel industry, but also to the nearest uh, 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 Kirana and uh, the, to the auto guy, etc. The second principle is that the experience, end-to-end -end experience of not just payments, but the whole commerce transaction should be simplified. So the differentiator that we have created, and this is relevant to, uh, to uh, the hotel and restaurant industry, is that we work for the merchant. Uh, the way we are integrating with your systems, is that payment is no different from billing. When your front desk makes a bill, all they see there is that geo money is an option to, for the customer to pay with. And after that, everything gets taken care of. There is no separate swiping of a card. There is no end of the day reconciliation required because it is automatic. And your settlement happens as per the uh, settlement cycle that takes place in India and your entire transaction goes through. For the consumer, it is a simple, I want to pay with your money. For the merchant, it is okay, I've accepted, and that's it. So I think that's uh, one differentiator that we are proud of. And of course, we will uh, uh, come to you uh, uh, later uh, to, to talk to you in great detail about how this uh, truly simplifies your operations. So uh, I think more or less, if you look at the wallets, uh, there is some amount of differentiation in terms of the scale that we have achieved and in terms of the services that we add on top of it. Seven years into the business, I think MobiQuick at this point of time can very well say that we have understood and uh, owned the skill of basically payments being done on our systems. We have mastered that skill. 
but now we are progressing further to understand how can we cover the end-to-end -end cycle, take it offline, integrate it with the merchants, make sure that our systems are seamless both on online as well as offline business. So the way I look at it, wallet per se for us is not a wallet anymore, it's a channel for us to integrate, make sure the customers get all the new offers, discounts, the merchants access the customer, know who their customers are, and it becomes one of the channels for us merchant to promote the business. So that's how I think it's different. Uh, for a bank, uh, this uh, space holds a much larger scope vis-a-vis -vis our wallet as a payment mode because we are the custodians of the money. Whoever the customer who is, say, for example, operating a wallet, he is funding that wallet from a bank account or a credit card. So in the bank, what we understand, instead of creating another layer of... Uh, layer of transaction in between or introducing a separate system. What, in fact, everybody would agree here that what ev all players in the payment industry are realizing that payment is not just a transaction anymore. It has to be part of your overall customer experience. So if I walk into a fine dining restaurant where you spend millions to create an experience for the customer, why that experience should be let down at the end of the day, end of the day when the check is presented to the customer and he takes out his card, cash, mobile, whatever be the option to make the payment. So all of us are striving to integrate that experience into the customer psyche. So a payment should not be looked just as a transaction at the end of the thing or the purchase is done. It should be part of an overall experience. And we as banks, because as I said, we are the custodians of money, we hold the bank accounts, why can't we create such channels wherein customer can seamlessly access his uh, money that is available in his account and have a good experience while out in the market doing shopping, purchasing goods or just having a good time. Coming to one of the challenges that usually customers face when they're using a wallet. It's about this whole thing of a top-up. You really need to top up your wallet before you can spend. Again, it's addressed to all. Uh, you, you guys can tell me how, do you, do you see that as a challenge? Do you have a solution for that? So, yeah. so we see it as a challenge for sure that yes, till the time the consumer is using cash, top-up is a concern for everybody. But what we are realizing is, one, to counter that, we have partnered with uh, players like Suvida, where we have taken up sessions for cash upload. You can go to a shop, give the cash, and it gets uploaded into your... We also have a mechanism of, you can call up a person and ask for a cash pickup at home. But having said that, the future lies in the fact that the more is the adoption, the more are the merchants integrated with this, we believe wallet will become a habit. It will be an extension of your account where you will always have that balance with you because of the number of ports or the number of transactions that you do in a given particular day. So this problem will get solved uh, eventually as the outreach, as the adoption increases for the wallet. Okay, as far as banks are concerned, uh, we have taken uh, this challenge that wallet face, we have taken it up as an opportunity. The new unified payment interface that has been recently launched. What it offers to the customer is convenience of accessing the funds in his bank account with the ease of operating a wallet. So today, if any of you want to uh, get on with UPI, all you have to do is download an application, configure a bank account, set a password, and you are good to go, which is as good as activating yourself on any of the wallets today with the added convenience that you are accessing the funds from your bank account directly. You don't have an intermediate stop wherein first you have to fund the wallet and then start using it. The money lying in your account is available to you on your mobile phone 24-7. And what more, unlike a traditional card transaction wherein the settlement to the merchant happens in T plus 1 or T plus 2, UPI offers a convenience of immediate settlement. The uh, live demonstrations that we uh, do and the transaction uh, analytics that we have done Average time for a UPI transaction to be done is 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, customer can receive a transaction request, he can authorize it, and money moves from account A to account B. 
15 seconds flat. That is how quick it is. So completely agree with uh, with with Saurabh. I think UPI is a game changer in our country. Uh, thanks to the work done by RBI and NPCI, no longer will the customer have to put money from their bank account into a wallet and then make a payment. That's your question, Shell. So um, you will have a phone. Everybody has a smartphone. And with all the things that are happening in India, uh, smartphone penetration is growing heavily. You can use, as a consumer, you have the option of keeping your money where it is, where you want to keep your money. You want to pay. You take your phone, pick funds from the bank account that you have, and pay directly. So the whole uh, thing of two-step payment is going to go away in India very soon. Uh, Saurabh, uh, this question is actually for you. You also mentioned about UPI. You've got a room full of merchants out here, and probably it's the best uh, you, can, you can address to them of how UPI is going to help us merchants. OK, so as I was saying that uh, as a hospitality industry, you spend millions in creating an experience for your customer when he walks into your hotel, walks into your restaurant. But when the time of payment comes, what is actually happening on ground? Say, for example, let's take an example of a restaurant. You ask for a check. The server brings a check to you. You take out your credit card. He goes back to the cashier. Your card is swiped. The machine then comes back to you. You enter your PIN. And then the transaction is completed. You are already investing in systems wherein today your servers can take orders on a mobile tablet, which is directly linked to your uh, uh, restaurant management systems. So if those processes can be made seamless and online, why not payments? Consider a scenario wherein a customer asks for his check, and your server in turn asks him, sir, what is your mobile number? Customer just gives him his mobile number, and the bill arrives on his phone. Customer just authorizes the payment on his phone and done with it. And this is very much doable. What if your server who is carrying the tablet on which he is taking the order can generate the bill on that tablet, convert into a QR code, which can then be read by a bank's mobile application, and the customer can then make a payment. No need of taking out a wallet, taking out cash or card. This is a level of seamlessness that we can do. In fact, uh, ICICI Bank would soon be rolling out a pilot in Mumbai with one of the fine dining restaurant chains where we would be displaying this capability. I, I would just like to add to what Saurabh said. The, uh, uh, as a hotel business or a restaurant business, you want to focus on your business. You want to be the best in servicing your customers. I think, uh, obviously, you need to get paid for the service that you're giving. But the whole uh, experience and the whole operations of taking payments, whether it is by check, whether it is by cash, and then it leads to cash handling, uh, or even, you know, to a large extent, with cards where it costs you money, uh, in, in some cases it is quite high. I think it is our job, combined, to work to creating several, you know, ways such that you don't have to bother with that operations. You must get paid, the money comes into your account, and you focus on servicing your customers the best. So I think that's where, you know, we, we are in UPI. It certainly helps, uh, but that's our job, really. So we just drift away from payments for now. Is it all about payments? Uh, do you have any other services apart from the wallets? Sort of, do you want to... Uh, yes, as a bank, we offer a complete suite of products to uh, manage uh, cash. Like we have got our cash management solutions, wherein we offer uh, both cash management facilities. We offer electronic payment and uh, settlement systems, and card-based payment gateways, both online and offline. Now, UPI has also been added to that bouquet. So yes, as a banker, it's pretty much our core business. Yeah, the same for the case with Mobiquick. I think being a wallet, payments is our core business and will continue to be our core business. Now, there are additional services that we are adding on top of it, like the micro lending for making sure that the cash flow gets managed. But yes, all in all, it's a payment. But let's look at it from a different take, because uh, typically what people understand is that when the UPI comes, 
the wallets will no more be there, right? So, and me and Sora, we were discussing this in the morning. So, the way now we look at it is that the wallets are have moved beyond the payments. Wallets are now a channel for you to understand, identify who your customer is, make sure you send the right offers to them, make sure you use that channel as a promotion to offer deals, new uh, products, offer discounts, and so on and so forth. Just to give you an example, today in the offline market, we sell 1,000 coupons per day for Domino's, almost like 300 for, per day for Sagaratna. And there are thousands of transactions that are happening offline. So these merchants are exactly able to identify who that customer is, what kind of an offer do I need to pass on, whether it's a loyal customer, regular customer, what is the loyalty program that we can offer. So yes, it, the wallets have moved beyond that. Payments is our core business, but what we are looking at is uh, much more than that. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, what you say. Like, though payments are core business, it al always comes down to what kind of value add that we are doing. Like in ICS Bank, as a banker, we issue cards to our customers, both debit and credit cards. But uh, what good a card is if it's only used for payments, right? So we build on additional services to it. Like we have this program called Culinary Treats, wherein uh, we tie up with uh, restaurants and we uh, work on creating special offers for our customers who are using that card there. So which offers, number one, additional incentive for the customer to use the card, which is beneficial for us. Plus, it gives increased footfall to the establishment because we are addressing those offers to the entire customer base of ICICI Bank. So yes, I totally agree here that apart from payment, what all value that we can offer as a channel which can enhance your business in terms of customer analytics, insights into customer behavior, providing triggers so that the customer comes and spends at your establishment. So that is the kind of partnership that we want the payment systems to grow into. Oh, I think you've got something for us. Well, as I said earlier, uh, Geo Money is one of the digital services of Geo. Geo is a consumer brand. Geo is a digital brand. It's uh, of course our chairman's vision to to with Geo help India get digitized faster, which has several uh, several benefits to all of us as consumers, as businessmen, and certainly as a country. So if I can, with your permission, shall just you know uh, kind of say what is Geo, right? Geo uh, is a telecom business. It's a telecom services which, which service which offers to all of us high speed connectivity on mobility, meaning when you're mobile or on your phone, or even you know through various forms of uh, fiber-based connectivity to your homes, to your businesses, uh, we provide very high speed connectivity. As you know, we've just launched. Uh, the roadmap is long. Uh, it is pretty comprehensive. Um, apart from telecom, uh, we get into various uh, businesses such as um, entertainment, uh, healthcare, education, of course, payments. Some of these we have uh, started to showcase to our consumer. So uh, if you download, a, if you are a Geo customer today, you download an application called as MyGeo. And uh, uh, my colleague Pradeep will just show what all MyGeo currently has, and to just give you a quick perspective of what we do. So this is the MyGeo app, which has got MyGeo, I don't know if it's clear on the screen here, uh, Geo Cinema, Geo TV, Geo Music, Geo Express News, Geo Chat, and various such uh, services. If we just go to Geo TV, for example, and this I'm showing you live, we have 4G connectivity here, absolutely live. We go to Geo TV, and at the click of a button, you will have live TV with you as a con consumer on your phone, right? These are the various channels that are available. Let's say we go to CNBC, yeah? This is live CNBC for you. Now this is available to 
all the consumers across the country, across uh, 6,000 towns and 100,000 villages today. Yeah. Uh, we change channel just by swipe of a, a finger and you get the next television channel. So this is, uh, you know, on the entertainment side, there's Geo Cinema where you have video on demand. We've got, I don't know how many tens of thousands of movies and serials and international and national and regional uh, content in there. Uh, something which is also very relevant to you is magazines. Uh, we read magazines on paper, uh, but we have got Geo Mags here. And like, uh, I don't know, hundreds of magazines are available at the click of a button. Because of high speed connectivity, you can download them in some 10 to 15 seconds and read the whole magazine on your phone or of course on your tab. I think some of these services are applicable, directly applicable to the industry, to, the, to you, uh, to the association, to your members. And uh, uh, this is Geo, uh, Shell. So this is just a quick um, thing. Even on Geo Money, uh, do you want to show loyalty? Even on Geo Money, uh, it's not just Geo Money. It's not just payments. We have actually got loyalty cards in there. So, uh, as we checked in yesterday, there's uh, Club Carlson, and uh, I wanted to show you what we've done with Reliance One Loyalty. Uh, we carry a physical card, right? And uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we carry a physical card to prove our membership, or you uh, uh, speak out your mobile phone. What we've done is we virtualize the card. R1 card is virtualized. It always is with you in your phone and hence in your pocket. Whenever you shop at a Reliance store, it recognizes that you are a member and it gives you the points automatically. Uh, so these are some examples, Shell, of uh, what we do as Geo. So Geo is beyond payments. And even within uh, Geo Money, as uh, uh, my co-panelists talked about, it is not just about payments. It is about commerce. It is about helping consumer get closer to merchant merchant get access to the right profile of uh, consumers as Zakar talked about. So I think it's a lot more than that. I think we should not see payments as a wallet. We should see payments as a network, as a means for getting closer to your customers. So when you're talking about so much that's digital, what about the security? Because I'm sure a number of merchants in the room also have the same question where you know, we had a issue with the PCI DSS where, you know, the latest information that we've got is that in case there's a fraud, the liability is going to be transferred to the, the merchant that has taken up that, has, has used the card at the last place. So uh, probably we'll start with Saurabh. Uh, how, how, how are you managing the security on wallets? Okay. Uh, so uh, wallets... Uh, what we are doing, because everything is now moving to <coughs> mobile phone, the smartphone that you hold in your hand. What is being done How is to create an identity of the customer wherein his account number, his mobile number, his handset, all of these are linked seamlessly together. Like uh, what the security uh, system that we have introduced in UPI, the way it works is when as a customer you are installing UPI application on your phone, it not only does recognize your mobile number and account number linkage, it also taps into your phone hardware and captures the IMEI number of your device. So whenever a payment is being made, it starts checking from number one, what device that instruction is coming from, number two, the login pin of the user, and number three, the transaction pin, the final pin where auth transaction authorization can happen. So for a person who wants to do a fraud on say a UPI or our pockets application, <clears throat> he would have to do number one, he needs to know the pin of the customer that maybe he can get by phishing. Number two, he would either have to clone the IMEI number of the device or he would have to physically swipe the device. Assuming he does that also. There's a mobile number attached to it. Now to uh, swipe the mobile number, he'll have to do SIM cloning or something like that, or he wants to say change the mobile number at the back end, 
you would need to approach the bank to get the account, uh, the mobile number changed with the bank account. So we are making things progressively difficult for fraudsters to break into our system. Coming back to more uh, basics of the system, uh, like you mentioned cards, Shell. The reason pin-based cards were introduced exactly because the number of frauds that were increasing. So as a customer, it is ultimately customer's responsibility that I should not disclose the pin, but as human beings, we are typically the weakest link in this entire process. And unwittingly, people give out their pins to strangers or fell prey to the uh, uh, fraudulent calls, etc. That's why the pin-based transactions were introduced. So that nobody can like just swipe away my card and uh, swipe it on a merchant establishment and get the payments approved. It has to be accompanied by a physical pin entry to ensure that the person, the legit owner of the card, was present at the time of transaction. So, uh, in addition to all the industry standards that we typically comply with, and we are under much more scrutiny, as a result, we take fraud much more seriously. And being smaller one, we can't even afford to get into any limelight like that. I think one of the other things that we do, in, uh, and apart from all the PIN numbers and uh, all the compliance that we do, we take care of, uh, we proactively monitor all the accounts and the payments that happen. One of the typical complaints that people come across with is that my uh, MobiQuick wallet was blocked, right? Now, part of this is also because of the proactive assessment that we do based on the transactions that happen. And we block it, and then only after certain scrutiny and checks, we allow or unblock it. So as a result, that is also part of our business that we do, wherein it's uh, fraud is checked proactively rather than reactively. Yeah, so I guess for us as the payment industry, security of the consumer and the merchant comes far before convenience or anything of that sort. If there's a lack of security, then nothing else matters. It's our money, right? So I think due credit to uh, RBI first. RBI has insisted, and we are probably one of the very few countries, large countries, where two-factor authentication by the consumer in making a payment to the merchant is required. So I think uh, that itself has, uh, we are one of the, by the way, uh, India is one of the lowest fraud, uh, you know, uh, payments in the world. Uh, and that all credit goes to RBI because we have introduced two-factor authentication. Now for wallets in particular, RBI did away with this or has done away with two-factor authentication and that's why the whole problem of frauds in wallets, etc. is a topic today. Right, in the card industry, frauds is a topic but far, far lesser. Um, <clears throat> I guess all of us are making our due efforts to ensure that uh, we still have two-factor authentication while the convenience is not, uh, you know, discounted. So those are the measures we are taking. I think uh, as industry, uh, you can be rest assured without paying due heed to this problem of fraud, we are not going to come to you and say, please try our service. That is, uh, I think, uh, we can say for all of us, uh, because we are all recognized players sitting in front of you, um, that's a challenge that is ours. We take the obligation, and uh, we are confident when we talk to you like this. So uh, I'll just have one last question to all. After that, we'll open up the floor for some questions. Basically, how, how can New Age payments help us improve for the entire industry. Do you want you to didn't ask the question about the markups and the commissions. You forgot that. I'll leave that to the floor. So how can how can new age payments uh, help the industry today? So I, I think uh, the way we have to look at it is uh, the new age payments is just a tool for the consumers to understand, provide them the convenience, and also the reach towards the merchant, understand what is the offers at the merchant, what are the things at the merchants. So it is not just a payment tool. That is not how we should look at it. It is a channel which is a connect between a merchant and their customers knowing who they are, what they are, and what do they want. So that is how these payments will actually help, or these tools or these mechanisms will help. Uh, as I uh, said earlier also, 
payment, we should not be looking at payments as just a mode of transaction, moving money from point A to point B. The new age payment systems would add value to you by weaving into your overall customer experience, whatever the experience that you are offering to the customer. The new age payments weaving into that would create the final wow moment for the customer. Apart from that, as again pointed out in the discussion, the kind of data that would be available at our disposal, the, uh, the payment uh, uh, data, the kind of patterns it can give to you, the kind of insights it can provide to you in your customer behavior would further help you, us, all the partners in the ecosystem to further tailor our offerings as per the customer requirement, create more targeted cam campaigns around marketing our goods and services to the customers which in turn would ensure a better ROI for our marketing spends, for our infrastructure spends. So uh, if I just take a broader view, uh, there are all kinds of businesses in India which serve consumers uh, across domains. And you, know, you have organized players in the retail space, in the hotel space, in the restaurant space, in the mass transit space. You have semi-organized uh, businesses in the very industries. And then, of course, you have the 10 million kiranas, the one and a half million uh, small uh, food shops, right? You have uh, more than one and a half million transport operators, your next door auto, rickshaw, uh, taxi. They don't take anything but cash. We know that. There is some change happening, thanks to some of our players here. But they don't take anything but cash. I think new age payments, which is primarily a function of new age technologies, uh, will enable all of these small merchants to accept digital payments, which helps their business get far more efficient uh, to get out from the hassle of managing cash, both in terms of payment from consumer to the merchant and from merchant back to the distributor. Both of these legs are, by the way, now cash or checks. Uh, it will make a phenomenal dent there where it is truly needed. To the organized players also, new age payments will uh, enable uh, you to operate far more efficiently. Uh, so, so that is what the other point I would like to make is that new age payments are always going to be evolving. I think the journey has just begun. We are not even scratching the surface. We are talking about mobile to mobile payment. Right, uh, with obviously paucity of time, we have not talked about a QSR where you know you just tap and go. Now it is available in many parts of the country, or of the world rather. Um, how about using sound waves to to connect the consumer to the merchant to making a payment? So I think tons of innovation is happening across the globe in India for various technologies that are evolving. And this new age payment is not one static thing. You know, if we talk again a year from now, it will be a completely different conversation. So I, we all look forward to using the, the, the strength of those technologies to keep innovating and to keep providing you better services at no further cost to you. And sir, I would like to add one more thing to it. Creating any new kind of a system or a technology or pro progression of any new kind of a customer behavior requires creating an ecosystem. So though we as payment players, it's our core job to create such system, provide it to the customers, we always look forward to cooperation from our merchant side because as I said, it's an ecosystem that we need to build. While Mobiquick and Geo can issue millions of wallets, we as bankers can issue millions of cards and mobile payment solution, but if we do not create an acceptance infra, there would be no incentive for the customer to use those payment systems. And none of the benefits that we just discussed would be translated for your business. So we actively look for participation from various industry bodies to push for these new age innovations into their business model. We have some time for questions, I believe. So we have any questions?
to understand is that the payment uh, can be made for the hotel room and any products or services which you use in the hotel. Or is it limited to only restaurants or certain services? Just need a clarification on that. Yeah, sure. Couldn't understand uh, the question very well. Sir, a little louder, please. Yeah. <coughs> what I want to understand is that the uh, the uh, the payment system, what you guys are talking about, it will be valid also for making my room payment, or only it is for F and B services or, F or miscellaneous services. Uh, if I can take this, I think it absolutely is valid for room payments as well as any such consumables that a, a, a typical guest consumes. So it gets integrated with your own POS systems. So the moment the person has to check out, you exactly know what is his bill and you can send it off to his mobile or wallet or UPI and get that payment done. So there is a seamless integration that we have and we make sure that we integrate with your POS systems or your own ERP systems and uh, it can be done to charge anything. How about, uh, I'm just uh, thinking aloud, huh? How about a situation when I check out? I don't have to come to the reception to do a check out. I have booked, I have stayed, I have uh, consumed certain extra services at the, sto at, the, at the hotel room. I check out, right? And I go, I can just uh, prove to anybody in the hotel that I've checked out. I think there are various things possible, sir. Uh, we need to work together. I think that's the other message, uh, at least I would like to give. It is not just about payments industry thinking about how to solve your problems. We need to talk, we need to discuss, we need to understand your problems so that we can fix problems one by one in consultation and together. Mm. So we co-create solutions. Yeah. Hello. I think this uh, question that was asked and uh, your response, I just want to clarify what you said something what we call in our industry as self-checkout. <coughs> and self-checkout is, is coming to us as well. Now, the critical par portion of self-checkout which, which is missing today, which is the payment, is what you are saying you can complete the loop. <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's the easier bit. Our industry, so you, if you are looking at giving us a solution and you talked about wowing the, our customers, uh, we have a major problem uh, in our industry, and I'm not talking about the hospitality, the hotel, the rooms department uh, <coughs> particularly, we offer credit facilities to our guests, our corporates. And uh, we have a challenge today that most of us have a very large portion of our revenue that accrues to us, which is not paid for uh, even after the normal credit period is over by corporates. Uh, <coughs> So typically what happens is that the cash flow of a hotel gets severely impacted because 60% of my business is to corporates. They've taken a 30-day credit facility and I'm on day 78 or day 80 or even day 90 and half of that money is not accru uh, uh, you know, in my bank. <coughs> now, as an industry, we generate thousands of crores worth of revenue. Uh, and which uh, a lot of which uh, you benefit from because a lot of, uh, of it is paid through cards, <coughs> right? But when we give corporates the credit facility and they turn on and complete the transaction after 90 days or 75 days through a bank account, uh, we are impacted because we don't get our own money for a very long time. <coughs> and this is a fabulous opportunity for you to turn on and convert this corporate credit into a virtual credit. So if you create an infrastructure which is a, let's say a large national exchange, credit, corporate credit worthiness exchange, where all corporates have to register. And then we, when we allow them to stay with us in our rooms, we only check whether they are part of that approved exchange. And I get paid from that particular exchange the next day. So basically like a credit card transaction today that I get credit T plus one or T plus two days, my entire worry about my cash flow disappears. You are starting to earn on every transaction that happens. And this is your business. You are in that business basically, essentially. And it's a win-win. It's a win-win for everybody because the corporate will also get his credit of 30 days, like exactly what you would have given him otherwise. Uh, we get our money back the next day. Our cash flow problems are solved. And uh, 
this is extra money in your account as well because you'll get a transaction fee on all of those uh, transactions which have otherwise not accrued to you. So if one of you guys can work with the industry to create this whole platform, uh, and then we just sign up. The other thing is, today there are corporates who have turned on and taken credit from us, and not paid our bills, and disappeared. And also, they've gone to the next hotel right down the lane, again, offered them their uh, uh, business. I lose the business, somebody thinks that he's gonna enjoy it, he loses out as well. Whereas what happens is in this particular cop exchange, once a corporate is blacklisted, everybody knows that he's not able to pay us. And so nobody would yeah. give him the credit. So if this can be done, it will... It, it yeah. So, uh, uh, Mr. Jimmy, uh, very good question. <laughs> and I'm not sure the current payment industry is uh, solved that part of the problem. I think most of us are looking at solving consumer to business problems. The problem that you just mentioned is a business to business uh, uh, assessment and evaluation followed by uh, knowing very readily as to how much credit is due, whether it is overdue in a very easy manner. And third, of course, is the entire problem of recovery. So I'm not sure the payments industry will be able to help you with the actual recovery. But before that, whatever um, intelligent analysis and evaluation can be done is very much possible. I don't think your problem would be, and you know, I, I can stand corrected, with very large corporates. But medium-sized, small enterprises, and there are millions of them in India, right? You, I'll, okay. So again, there are two things, whether the person disappears or whether it is late payment, right? So late payment problem is one, and disappearing is another. So I think disappearing is a big problem that can be solved with, uh, uh, with more information, as Saurabh said earlier, on to various payments of theirs, not just to the hotel industry. The same small enterprise or medium enterprise is making payments to various other, uh, you know, in the ecosystem. So we are in a position now to aggregate all of that, and I think there's a clearly a possibility of us in aggregating that pool of information, creating analysis, creating one database, uh, almost like a Sybil for consumers, uh, to be able to help you with that. Very much possible, but we obviously will need to work with you to uh, solve that. Ask me a question. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Munaf Kapadia. Uh, I don't represent a restaurant as such, but I represent a small uh, startups in Bombay, where our business uh, is primarily home delivery. So, as uh, you gentlemen were talking about uh, the value that payment solutions offer FNB, uh, primarily in the physical restaurant space with uh, transactions, etc. I just started wondering that, like for example, me and my friends, we do roughly 1,000 deliveries a day at a ticket size of 400 to 500 rupees across Bombay, selling uh, samosas to biryani. Uh, is there a way for payment solutions to come and add value out there, not only in the final transaction stage, but also in terms of taking my 1,000 deliveries to 3,000 deliveries by helping me generate demand? So I, I think the way you need to look at it is that the payment, uh, once we understand where the consumer is sending or what the consumer is spending on, right, which we have a control over, we understand which merchant, how much money the consumer is spending. So today, you, what you need to look at it is that if you have a problem and if you know which area you want to target, right, then the apps can exactly tell you who all are the customers that would probably be interested in your services or your food or your client, who, who can be your probable clientele. We can send in notifications targeted to them, we can send in marketing and it can be used as a marketing channel. Your offers, your discounts, your, uh, and something to acquire customers rather than doing the transaction alone. I hope that answers. Yeah, uh, hi, this is uh, Nirav Gandhi. Uh, I have a you know, simple question. I believe uh, this is all free. You are doing this for free, right? <laughs> yes or no? Uh, th the day I get uh, to stay in your hotel for free, you will also do it for free. No, no that's a lighthearted. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the point that you are here, you didn't, none of you have mentioned anything, so I mean, you know, it's always assumed it's free then. <laughs> or you would have mentioned it. The merchant yeah, fee yeah, so I think or we are whatever. referring to the merchant fee. So, Let's get a perspective on that. Good question. We'll try and answer that. Uh, 
cards industry has been in India for uh, two to two and a half to three decades. And uh, transaction fees, transaction fees uh, has been part of the uh, offer, right? Part of the service. That transaction fee has reduced in the last five years to quite an extent uh, because of larger value payments, more transactions going through, and that will continue to reduce. Personally, and as Reliance Geo, we do not think that's going to be completely zero ever by the industry. I'm not talking of our offering or something like that. I'm referring to the industry. Uh, but this will not be the traditional revenue model for payments business. That is the tradition, that is the payment, that is the revenue model that has existed, right? That will be a very small fraction, even if it is, and the revenue models will change. In uh, my last conversation with Mr. Nachiket Moore, who's really the architect of the new age payments in India, along with Mr. Nandan Nilekini and others, really the expectations from us as payment players is to reduce, is to increase the, the number of transactions, get the costs down to a level where it doesn't pinch us and hence doesn't pinch you, and create further different uh, revenue sources. Uh, so you can, uh, you, you can be sure that the fees will keep reducing, if not get down to zero uh, in a very short time. So what, what is the estimated fee as of now? I think it's, uh, it's probably unwise to just put some numbers to it. We know what today fees are, American Express charges something between 2 to 4%, even 4.5% to certain merchants. Yeah, some of the uh, premium cards, they, credit cards, they charge 1.5%. Debit cards is capped at 75 basis for transactions below 2,000 at 1% to transactions above 2,000. Most of the uh, new age payments are either charging similar or lower. Um, my own expectation is that this will come down to small bips, uh, you know, in the next six months, one year, two years period, depending on how the industry progresses. So would it be 1%? Sorry? Can it be 1% to start with? It can very well be, I think. And of course, pricing is left to different, different players. So, you know, whatever the players want to charge, and it's depending on their economic model, right? Uh, but definitely, it, it should be that or lower in, in my view. I, I, I mean, it's not an economic model uh, which depends just on you or me. I think it's market driven. So uh, when you want more customers, more volume, you need to keep it low. Then only we'll be, we will encourage to accept it more. So I don't think there's a much of a choice for you and me. You know, if you're going to keep it two and a half, forget it. I, I'm sure you, not, my, my association not even interested to sit with anybody. So, so there you have the to be, It Absolutely. needs to be, so th that was the point of asking you is that, do you think, all of you, is it going to be at that 1%? Because this is, this is no replacement to credit card as, of, as yet, never. It, it's just a new age, new mentality. For you to drive this, take over the credit card business, it better be 10 times better than credit card. See, uh, so the way I look at it is, I am not replacing the credit card business at all. I am generating a new business wherein the new customer which you would have otherwise acquired and that is the additional charge if at all we are charging now to answer whether it is going to be 1%, 1 1.5, 1.25, nobody can answer it right now, right? It's all, like you said, market driven. We get charged by banks, we pass it on and uh, there are certain top ups and the, let's look at the value adds that we provide in terms of getting you new customers, in terms of getting you better margins. And this is how you can, we can probably together justify our existence. I'm not convinced about new customers. I'm just saying it's, it's just another source for my existing customers or existing spenders in the country uh, to spend more in my outlets or hotels. Yeah, you're, so not, you're not bringing me a farmer to start sitting and eating in my restaurant. It's the same set of people who are spending. They are using an alternate payment method yeah, so Neera, can I ask that, answer that? So even with your existing set of customers, there are two benefits that we clearly see to you as uh, the business. One is that the costs of accepting payment, indirect cost of accepting payment, such as cash, checks, the whole reconciliation, the accountant's work, all of that, that reduces to a point where you don't see direct uh, 
impact on the bottom line, but actually there is a huge impact on the bottom line. So that's one. And second is clearly the direct fee that is charged by banks and payment service providers has to reduce, the, as you rightly said, the market will determine the uh, the right uh, you know points where uh, where the fees is going to be charged or even if it is getting tending to zero so i think if i am the industry and of course as reliance we are part of you because we have a stake in oberoi uh, we know what are the pain points out there uh, i am very delighted as part of you that with all with the new age payments the cost to you is expected to reduce phenomenally yeah, so take this discussion further. So while, as sir rightly said, you might not see a reduction in an upfront fee, but your overall cost of accepting and processing a payment in electronic mode is consistently going down. So effectively, the net effect is the cost of managing that payment or that particular transaction is coming down for you, and it will further keep on falling down further. Yes, there are certain undeniable costs that uh, we as payment service providers, we incur in setting up infrastructure when we bring out facilities to you wherein uh, SDFC bank card can be swiped on say, a city bank machine, we create all that interoperable network and all. There are certain costs that are already involved for us as a provider, so which needs to be recovered. But what we are consistently as industry, what we are trying to do to bring down overall costs in the system down by bringing in more efficiency, number one. Number two, provide you benefit in an indirect way to provide multitude of other methods to you so that the cost that you incur in traditional mode today, be it in terms of carrying cash, be it in terms of setting up infrastructure for reconciliation of payments, etc., that keeps on coming down for you. Sorry, we've run out of time. I won't be able to take that next question. Uh, uh, thank you to all of you all to uh, for coming in and uh, having this discussion with us. Nitri, for sure, for sharing your expertise knowledge with us. Now I will request Mr. Nirav Gandhi to come on stage and present Momento to all the members. <laughs> Mr. Shell Barot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.